Kinematics is just the study of motion and, uh, and how we describe that motion. We haven't gotten into explaining the motion yet. We're just trying to, uh, to be able to make accurate descriptions, this time mathematical descriptions, of that motion. And then we can actually extrapolate from these to make some uh, predictions. So there are a few different aspects of motion that we're going to be concerned with. The first of those is position, both the starting position and the ending position. Now before we can really decide that, we have to decide on a moment in time to call our starting moment and another moment to call our ending moment. Uh, the starting moment should be before the ending one, of course. Uh, and then the variables we use for those are x not for starting or x with a subscript zero there. You can think of that as the position at a time of zero. And then just an x for the ending position or the final position. Next we'll look at the velocity. Again, we have a starting velocity and an ending velocity. Assuming that acceleration is not zero, those two numbers will be different from each other. We do need to account for direction here and actually everywhere. We can do that by uh, using a positive or a negative sign uh, in these, uh, these equations in our calculations. We use V and V naught for ending and starting velocities respectively. Again, the V naught, think of it as V at a time of zero. That's the starting velocity. Then we'll consider acceleration. Um, important note here for the equations that we'll be using, we have to have spans of time where acceleration is constant. So from that starting point to that ending point, the acceleration can't change throughout that, that whole time. If it does, then we have to get into differential equations for our calculations, and you know, we don't know how to do that at this point. So um, constant acceleration problems only, and we use the variable a to represent acceleration. And last up, we'll have some information about uh, time or duration involved here. Uh, I wanted to add that note that we're thinking about the duration aspect here, not what time is it when the motion starts, not what time is it when the motion ends, but how much time passes between those two moments. It's also worth noting that there are certain units that we use uh, consistently, at least the standard units in the metric system. For position, our units are going to be uh, meters in general. We might have centimeters or kilometers or in the English system feet, inches, miles, things like that. But the standard unit there is meters. For velocity, the standard will be meters per second. Again, you might see miles per hour, or kilometers per hour, but meters per second is the standard. For acceleration, meters per second squared is the standard. That's how many meters per second the speed or the velocity changes by for each second that goes by. And then last up, our standard unit for time is the second, which I usually write out as SEC, just because I have kind of sloppy handwriting and I don't want people thinking that that's a five. Now we also have a few equations on the AP exam. You'll be given three equations to deal with, uh, with these different variables. Now these three equations will be uh, given to you on, on the equation sheet on the AP exam. So you don't need to memorize these. Uh, but you certainly know how to, need to know how to use them. I think it's worth noting that each one of these equations has uh, certain variables that are in it and then certain ones that are not in it. And I think that is a, a really nice way to figure out which equation you're going to be using. Our general process, which we'll talk about in just a minute, includes listing out the information um, using these variables here that we're either given or that we're asked to find. And then I generally will look through this list or think about this list and what's missing from that, uh, that list that we create of what, uh, what we're looking for or what we're given and then match that up with one of the equations over here. Let's try an example problem now uh, in which we drop a, uh, a rock into a hole and listen for the sound of it hitting the bottom to figure out how deep the hole is. So let's uh, first begin by picking out information that we have or information that we're looking for. Now, at the beginning when you're doing this, I think it's useful just to write out all the different variables that we might need and then um, uh, filling in what we have and what we're looking for. So the things that we could be working with here are x naught and x, the starting and ending position, v naught and v, the starting and ending velocity, acceleration, and time. Um, 
for x naught and x, we don't uh, really know either of those values, but we do get to decide what we call a position of zero. So let's use that to our advantage. Let's say that when the rock gets down to the very bottom, it's going to have a position of zero. And then it's going to start up at some height where we're dropping it from. And that's going to be our, uh, our x naught position. So that's going to end up being what we're looking for. So I'll put a question mark there to indicate we want to know that. The, uh, the problem states that the rock is dropped from rest. From rest means that it starts at a speed of zero. Starting velocity is zero. The uh, 2.35 seconds later, that's going to be the time that it takes to get down to the bottom. And then we've got V and A. Well, we don't know how fast it's going to be moving when it hits the ground, but we do know that it's gravity pulling it downward. So anything being pulled downward by gravity and no other force is acting on it, it's going to accelerate at 9.8 meters per second squared. And that's a downward velocity. I want to use the system so everything down is negative and up is positive. So I'll call that a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now the velocity, uh, the final velocity here, we don't know it, we don't care about it, so that's not going to be a part of our problem, and that can be a useful way to pick an equation. We're going to use the equation that doesn't have v in it. So that would be this equation. x equals x naught plus v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. Now I like to do my algebra first, Sometimes you're not actually going to be given numbers, so it's useful to know how to do that, how to work just with the variables. But I like to do the algebra first anyway, just so I don't have to keep writing down the numbers again and again. I want to know what x naught is, so I'm going to move x naught over to the left side by subtracting it from both sides. So I'll have x minus x naught is equal to v naught t plus one half a t squared. And I don't want that, um, that x there anymore. So uh, I'm going to uh, subtract that from both sides. So we get that negative x naught equals v naught t plus one half a t squared minus x. And you know, again, I don't really want negative x naught. I want positive x naught. So I'll just multiply everything by negative one. So that'll be x minus v naught t minus one half a t squared. Now that I've got it rearranged in terms of x naught, I'll plug in the values that I know. So x naught is equal to the starting position or the ending position, which is zero, minus uh, the starting velocity was zero, so zero times t is going to be zero again, minus one half times acceleration, negative 9.8 meters per second squared times t squared, so that's 2.35 seconds squared. And so we get an answer here that x naught is equal to a positive 27.1 meters. That is indeed a very deep hole. Um, now, it asks how deep is the hole. We've got a statement that the starting position is 27.1 meters. It's probably a good idea just to finish out by writing um, a statement that the hole is 27.1 meters deep and use that as your final answer. Always good to write those out just to be sure that you've answered the question that they've asked.